going for a first day in school. Um, All right. I'm going to give you the feeding cake one as well because obviously Mini Max just needs his. All right, this morning, the Engelke babies, who are going to be Momo, Sky King, and Zebulon, are going to take their first trip to the intro cage, as we just finished preparing it yesterday. So that'll leave just little Yolanda here, and Mini Max, as they're both just still recovering from injuries. <laughs> Sky King says no. You got a zap. Hey, buddy. Let me know if you need help with separating them. Okay, while you're doing that, we'll have a look at Floki. Floki, who is now in the back, in the open back area, having a great time. Just had his bowl of milk, which is just to get him some extra protein, and of course he loves it. Just waiting for his food. So you got mini the bond has been broken. Okay, all three. All three. Um, they didn't go easy. Getting into the bus. The well, they'll, uh, to the school. they'll enjoy it once they're there. What is this? Uh, so this is the feeding cage total. We'll make more So they're all on feeding cage. Oh, you have notes? Yeah, I took the notes. Yeah, I've given the individual notes and then I've given him the feeding cage because I've just got two. In a clipboard. Um. Alright. Here we go. Going to Angel Team with the three baby. So this cage got a nice refurbish. Everything's brand new. Nice big sleeping perch. Okay, babies. Look how many mamas are coming over We've got Stick here. He's a male, of course. In the back we've got Maggie, a few others just Hello, starting to make their way friend. over. Yes, look. Sky King pulled back by Momo. Momo, Momo started to cling on Sky King. And of course, Some Bobo, always around. So just outside we've got all three of last year's babies here. So we've got April on the right, in the back we've got Danny, or sorry, in the back we've got Howie, back we got Howie, and then this is Danny. Yeah. April was found alone and came in at the age of four with severe ringworm. Howie's uh, mother was shot in Potsdam and handed into the Johannesburg Wildlife Vets, and the same with Danny. We're not too sure what happened to uh, to the mother. The preparation for the Engelke foster mom integration was quite extensive. So we're here and their foster mom, in <coughs> foster mom integrate. Um, so Chibi used to be in here. He got moved to another cage so that we can use this one for the mums. Um, and it's been done up, redone. Um, so maintenance has been done. looks very nice. Um, and now, finally, the three babies have moved here, so we've got little Zebulon. 
who is not so little anymore. He has grown a lot and he is drinking so much. He had 45 ml in one go this morning, just after waking up. Look at your belly. Massive. <laughs> and then we've got Momo. Just found some porridge. Some acacia leaves. And then Sky King. So those three boys are uh, candidates for Engel Key. Um, I haven't seen two monkeys, too many monkeys show up yet, but I haven't been here long. <laughs> um, yeah, it will be exciting to have them join the troop, especially Zeb is very much loved because he was one of the teeny tinies. Uh, one teeny tiny that was here and took so much care and so much special attention with night shifts where you have to feed him every two hours, etc, etc, special feeding. And now he's a big boy drinking from the feeding cage, ready to meet our new mum. Sky King, Sebulon, and Momo. Well, of course, finding your way around the intra cage is uh, just as important in uh, their learning uh, behavior, just to find out where everything is, where they can sleep, uh, where the water and things are. Uh, getting used to how to climb up and down everywhere uh, just so it's not so frightening uh, when the mom comes in at least they they are used to their environment they're comfortable in the new environment and uh, it's not so frightening in the end of the day so uh, this lot seems to be having a good time at the moment um, enjoying themselves and finding their their way around quite easily Momo? King. You can also see how inquisitive these little guys are already. He sees one of the little ones have uh, found some nice forage. And of see. course, uh, you've got to go over and either try to grab it away or see what he's got to see if it's worthwhile. So uh, that slowly becomes all of their mission. Uh, to see who can get the, the new little bit of forage uh, that somebody's found. Momo here, not so sure. Oh, gosh. Got the monkeys. This guy can just playing on the ropes. Trying to film when you've got some little monsters jumping around. Uh, is not always the easiest thing. Momo. Sky King. Scary male passing through. So yes, even at this age they can tell the difference between male and female. And uh, of course males to them are a little bit more frightening. And uh, they, as you can see, very accepting uh, of a female. Zap, more, more.
especially Sky King and Momo really going at it here with the playing. Sky King and Momo eating some white berries as they're just doing acrobatics. Oh no, what did you do? This one's Sky King. And Momo. Zebulon loves his blankets. This is Momo, and that was Zebulon, and we are in the angle key cage, and the babies are up high on the branches, which is great to see, they're very confident, and um, Sky King got a bit of a scare, and is hugging my leg. Baby's doing great, and they've got a nice, beautiful view here into the jungle. That is the Angle Key Troop. Baby's still getting accustomed to the the noises from the trip, the vocalizations. Uh, the chases, the little fights that break out, uh, still get a bit nervous when that happens, but they'll soon get used to that. And Sky King, finally gone up to join them. So we've got all three together, Sky King left, Momo middle, Zeb here at the front, now I'm moving to the back. Well, today I've just cleared a berry bush which has been growing outside my cabin. Uh, it is popping off, so I'm giving it to all the monkeys. Today it's the babies and the foster mums getting the treats. As you can see, monkeys love these. And of course, this is natural, natural food for the mold they would be eating in the wild if they could forage. Um, so the more natural stuff they can eat the better. So that was Oswald um, and Luca. Over here we've got Peggy, we've got Panicure, here's Sadie, uh, where is Terry? Terry is 
Oh, Terry's in the feeding cage. <laughs> Terry's having a drink. I think Sadie is excited. So... Just need to find the hole. <laughs> I can never see it. There it is. Let's bring these over. <laughs> Alright, we can have a big one. Here we go. So, lots of good nutrition in these, lots of nice fats. These berries are nice and fatty. Alright, so these guys are doing really well. All settled. Uh, now we'll take a trip up to Angle Key where uh, a few of the babies just moved there this morning. They're still in baby care, but we'll go and check them out. This is uh, Alec and uh, Lolly. Alec uh, was one of those monkeys that just used to be able to escape from everywhere. Uh, he had to have a special enclosure built for him. And uh, so now he lives uh, in this beautiful um, enclosure, which was built by some volunteers. And uh, Lali was introduced to him. Uh, Lali is also one of these naughty females that doesn't get on with anyone. She has a bit of an attitude. But she seems to be doing okay with, with Alex. So these two are, seem to get on very well now. And up at Goliath, we have Claudette Marie. And just below me, we have Edson on the right here, just looking up with Mommy Mrs. Gold. And Lottie, of course, being carried. All loving their berries. Sadie and Terry. She still likes to suckle on food. Baby visiting. <laughs> Got Peggy and Sadie on a feeding cage. Now she went to groom Terry. Well, panic, you're stealing all the attention for herself, but Terry doesn't seem to mind. She's still eating her papaya that she found. So they seem to be doing quite well now. Sadie and Terry are not the most interested in any moms, so they've been a little bit difficult to get fully settled. Peggy towing me off, looking close to Sadie. The next door, we still got Oswald, who's huge now. Huge. So soon he will be released when we're sure that the ones next door are fully settled. Um, because if we let Oswald out, he will see all the attention of the troop, and then we can't 
change anything about the others anymore. Sadie. Getting enough room from both. Oh, Terry, not Sadie. Sadie's climbing here. So Zida's probably around uh, just over two years of age, so she's still uh, a little juvenile. We've got a lot of juvenile spirit, so she will be playing around and uh, trying to attract attention. And uh, monkeys seem to do this uh, when they're feeling a little bit insecure uh, and they're not really sure of themselves. So uh, just like a little child, she's going to be showing off and everything to try and attract attention to herself. Uh, which is good in a way because she's uh, attracting the other samangas from the other side and she's about the right age to to start getting on uh, with ones like mango and and i'm sure he's going to enjoy a new friend um, but of course her age also makes it difficult it's not something you can just open the cage and let them mix it's going to take a little bit of time see fighting off a bandit So those noises from one of the bandits are actually happy sounds, so uh, they're probably also just interested in this new strange monkey around and wondering what's going on. And then you can see like a little bit of interaction uh, with the troop and things like that. But not that it's good because their behaviors aren't nice uh, trying to smack an older monkey. Um, but yeah, over time she'll learn and hopefully they're not going to uh, put her in a place too quickly. We, uh, we hope by that time she has learnt a little bit of some mango behaviour. I'm having a blankie or sometimes another little fluffy toy is uh, something we find uh, happens in uh, primates that have been pets or been looked after by humans for a long time. They seem to get their attachment or comfort um, from something else because the human and it can't always be there all the time and uh, normally some other objects being given to the animal uh, to comfort it or to keep it warm or whatever the reason was in this case it was probably a blanket uh, so now that's that's what she's using as her security um, sometimes covering herself up with it playing with it and carrying it around so uh, of course this is something she's going to have to slowly learn to do without but uh, yeah well, she's got the time and uh, we need to let them adjust and uh, basically see how they get on with the troop first before you disrupt their lives totally so some of the things that they enjoy having it's good to keep it with them um, just to make sure that they're comfortable and uh, feel good in the place they are that it's not too scary and there's uh, things that they do know uh, that are around them So as you can see, even in this case, it's a sign of uh, security and safety. And she's feeling safe underneath the blanket. Uh, thinks that nobody else can really see her because she can't see anybody else. Um, so this does offer her a little bit of comfort in this kind of situation. And uh, of course, it gives her a little bit of time to be by herself um, and away from everybody else.
Well, you can see that uh, the forage is uh, not only nutritious for them, but is also uh, a source of entertainment. So uh, it is very good, and uh, they really do enjoy it. So that gets them really active, and at least they're finding the right part to chew. That thicker end of the of the grass is actually very juicy. Um, it is nice to chew on, and you get like a nice little sweet um, juice coming out there. So the monkeys really do love this. Um, and we go around and give all the monkeys as much of this grass as we can. It, it does form uh, quite a large part of their diet out in the wild. And of course, you can see how these little ones uh, are getting used to it and enjoying it and playing with it. And uh, it's, it's quite a great uh, source of entertainment for them as well. The great part about volunteering is also getting that opportunity just to sit with these little guys and watch them slowly grow up and all the little antics. So they start off very small, not, not doing much, but they're getting to the age now where they're starting to play around and jump around and, and really become little balls of fun, um, doing all kinds of crazy things, getting into mischief. And uh, sometimes it's just nice uh, sitting with them, just watching them carry on and, and playing with each other um, and seeing what they get up to. Um, just also remember all of this time they're testing each other to s find out dominance. They will bite each other slightly um, or pull each other's ears or tails or roll around with each other. And all of this is, is a learning curve that they're actually going through. Who's going to be submissive? Who's going to be stronger than the other one? And uh, these are things that they'll take, them th take through with them uh, throughout their whole lives. Um, so yeah, this, it starts right from this very, very early age. This is of course the little Sky King practicing his aerobics. Um, you can see even how the little tail does help them a little bit. Um, not that it's got any ways of holding on or anything, but it just gives that extra little bit of support. Sometimes look how he's wrapping it around um, just to hold himself or give him the balance. So it does play a vital role in keeping their balance when they're sitting on things and stuff like that. So although they can do without the tail, it is something that can help them. Here we have our three newest arrivals. That's Candy giving Ricky Joe a bit of a groom. She's super protective of him, always cuddling him, grooming him, going to him when he cries, like a real good big sister. <laughs> and it was Bobby in the beginning who's now just gone jumping around. Can you go join them, Bobs? <laughs> Candy is the biggest oldest girl here. Ricky Joe, the youngest of this group, but he's still quite old compared to the other orphans we have in currently and when their arrival ages. And that's Bobby who's just joined them and he's climbing up the wall now. <laughs> he's a little bit between the two, a little bit older than Ricky Joe, younger than Candy. That's Ricky Joe.
We have, we've started some feeding cage training with the new three. So they do use the back of the feeding cage to go in and get the bottles. Um, I've just moved it away from the walls. So they do have access to the holes now to see if any of them will show any interest in going through this way. Oh, instead they want to just tear the bottle completely off. <laughs> really? Really? Okay, let's reattach that because this little monster here knows how to get what he wants. So Ricky Joe has now been into the feeding cage. That's him just here. He's using this bigger hole here. He went in and out and drank from this bottle, which is great. Um, he's now gone up to sit with Bobby Candy at the window there. She still hasn't quite mastered using the holes yet, but her and Bobby do run in the open back here to drink from the bottles. So they're all learning. They're just learning at the pace that suits them. <laughs> Got candy, desperate to give RJ a cuddle here. She actually keeps trying to groom him and lip smacking at him, so I think she's going to be an excellent foster mom someday. She's really keen to look after him properly. And Bobby just throwing himself into the mix. Sasa here just brought a new swimming pool for our rubber juveniles Glenn, Katie, Jenny, Brennerke, Peanut and Lolo because they keep going to swim in their little um, drinking bowl so now they have a big one let's see what they think about it curious about the new thing already <laughs> like what is this? <laughs> so now we're just waiting for some water but they already seem to like us very much and this will get very messy I'm sure this is Lolo he is huge um, he's a big quite dominant boy in this troop so he's a bit bully even I feel like also play so he's playing with Glenn now. All good friends. And this is Katie, she still has a pink face, trying to reach my phone. Jenny. Katie's actually getting bigger than Jenny now, which is remarkable. So much energy. Oh my God. I think they don't want you to touch the new, the new blade playground. Oh, 
watching. It's gonna be so dirty again so quick. Oh, but nice day. Relax. They really love the new pool. You can see who likes it because they're so filthy. Lolo doesn't seem to enjoy swimming so much. He's very clean. And then you just have Jenny, <laughs> who is absolutely filthy. This peanut. and Glenn playing, chasing each other around. Not on Glenn and Katie. Lolo is not impressed. Today we are moving over our new three babies. Candy, Ricky, Joe and Bobby. They were in quarantine for the last three days and now they are finally allowed to move into Disneyland with the other babies. And who's in Disneyland? In Disneyland we got Minnie Max, Spirit, Josh and Yolanda right now. Here come the babies! Jet, will you close Loveland? Will you close? Will you close the door to Loveland? In Loveland, Love sorry. <laughs> Ooh, 
sometimes, especially when she gets very excited. So we'll have to watch out for Come that. Come on, Candy. <laughs> Who's this? So excited to climb. Hi. RJ? Hi. Hi, hey, RJ. Happy, Happy monkeys. Josh is finally feeling better. Oh, finally. Different. Adam's lips. Yes. And um, do you know if if uh, Josh has had any? Um... I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Yeah, we have Momo and Zebulon meeting uh, some of the bandit juveniles, um, which is great. At least they're uh, associating a little bit with other monkeys and seeing that they're not as terrifying as they look at uh, when you first see them. So it's, it's kind of a good I interaction. You can see how well they all seem to be getting on. There's no uh, fighting or swearing or anything. It's just total interest. And of course, the little um, bandit babies are uh, just as interested in these new little ones and uh, seeing what they're all about. So uh, really great, nice little uh, group here to see what's going on. Um, we've had a little Sky King join there as well. And uh, so now we've got the three of them just uh, messing around and hopefully this is going to make their integrations with the foster mom a lot better. Well, it's always time for a little bit of fun and games and running around and playing chase. So, uh, as we said in earlier videos, this is one way for them uh, to learn about their new environment, uh, just to feel a little bit more comfortable before the um, foster moms come in. But also do remember that this play, as I said with the earlier bunch, uh, is also testing each other out, testing each one's dominance, who's uh, stronger or weaker than the other one. Um, their different little personalities start coming out and uh, all of this is, is testing each other throughout the time. So it even starts from this little young age. Even though it does look like fun or games, you will find one little one biting another one a little bit harder than normal and a little screech coming out now and again. So uh, yeah, it's all part of growing up for, for little monkeys. So it's going to be interesting to see how these little ones uh, interact at first when, the, when their first foster mom comes in. They are very, very comfortable with themselves and uh, very, very confident at the moment. You saw earlier how they were interacting a little bit with the, with the bandits, so they're not too frightened. But uh, yeah, it's always a different story when there's a little bit of protection like a fence uh, in between you. Sky King and Momo. Well, uh, Momo and Sky King really out for the What's count up? here after all that jump around and playing. But uh, look at little Zeb, still very active, still interested in what's going on around him. So he hasn't quite tied himself out. He's still very, very inquisitive. And uh, sometimes these are the, s the little difference in personality traits uh, that makes a difference to them later on in, in their lives. So, uh, 
Yeah, he's still uh, looking around. He's not quite as tired as others, but uh, I'm sure he'll get there soon. Quite the acrobatic. <laughs> I just got a fright. This big male walking past here. Well, that's a great little Momo going into the feeding cage there um, to help himself some milk. You can see like how he's tests the bottles to see which is his favorite one uh, so he can start drinking. Uh, the cage is a little bit tricky in this case because it is a little bit off the ground so they do feel a little bit strange. But uh, normally we try and keep them filled underneath so they've got a hard surface to, to actually walk on. But uh, great to see that he got in the feeding cage and managed to get something to drink. Sep. Sky King. Trying to get his sweet potato and he stole it. <laughs> He's like, nope, it's mine now. This is Nora in South Trip. Nora arrived in 2018 as an orphan and has now a baby herself. The baby has born just less than a day ago. And you can see the baby is still very small. She needs to hold the baby because he's too small to cling on. But by tomorrow um, the baby should be able to. Let's try getting closer. Here we have Murray and Colin. And there we have a Bobo's baby from the previous year, Styles. And there we have Bobo. And this is Saf, a bandit who likes to protect uh, Bobo and her babies.
So here we have Nora with her baby. So you can see how protective uh, the males can be. They just come and give a little bit of a warning and uh, tell you to stay away. Um, so that is basically their job in, in the troop to protect the female and her little baby. So a good job from this male, just making sure Hannah didn't get too close. Well, we often get asked, uh, can the females of a troop have babies? As you can see, they can. Um, it's not something we're normally very proud of, although I'm sure Nora is extremely proud of a little baby. Uh, but sometimes we get a rogue male uh, that manages to get through all our defenses and uh, gets one of the females pregnant. In this case, it was Nora. Uh, so she's extremely happy that she's got uh, her own little offspring. Um, it also complicates things because we can't now introduce other little monkeys in with her because she has now got a baby in this enclosure uh, so this enclosure would not normally get introductions of, of new little ones uh, just to get her a chance to settle and make sure she can bring her little one up properly um, but she's a very very proud mom and also it's sometimes good for us just to see the behaviors uh, of um, the other monkeys when they do have a natural birth how they treat their little ones to make sure they're doing everything correctly because you must remember she was an orphan at some stage um, so it's good to see they are able to do things look after their baby naturally but that's just instinctive with all mothers so even though moms get kind of worried every mom knows how to look after their baby in their own way Well, it's getting harder and harder to tell these little ones apart. But of course, this is uh, a real big day for them. Um, they're going to be meeting their foster moms for the first time. Uh, so it's always uh, good just to see how they've acclimatized, how they're going to do, and what they're going to think uh, about these new big monkeys coming in to say hello. Looks like Momo and Zeb playing here near the feeding cage, um, <laughs> playing on the very string that's actually going to let the foster moms in without knowing it. Uh, some of the moms are getting uh, eager and sitting around the front uh, of the entrance of the cage, but uh, these lot are so totally unaware of what's going on. There's one of the moms and uh, we'll see how things are going to go soon. Everyone's just getting ready making sure everybody's sitting around in the right position so that we can make sure nothing actually goes wrong. Okay. Little one's getting impatient, playing with the rope themselves, saying if you guys don't hurry up, we're going to let mom in ourselves. So all the pins in the little entrance gate have been removed and uh, everybody's just getting outside of the enclosure um, so we can let the moms in without uh, causing any disruptions.
so the first uh, adult female in is Caroline and she usually is one of the first in, she's good with babies uh, but the babies have actually shown a lot of confidence Momo was the first and he just walked straight up uh, Sky King followed and now Zeb is also down here uh, and uh, the alarm call test and the babies all passed so this is how you want them to respond uh, to an alarm call is that they jump up the trees and jump up the branches to safety well that's uh, gone extremely well not really much interaction between the, the mom and the babies at the moment but uh, they don't seem uh, frightened at all of her there's no screaming or running away she has come pretty close to them um, also when they did get that little bit of a fright you saw they jumped in the same direction as what she did which is is kind of uh, a good sign and uh, they are sort of following her very interested uh, not so frightened so uh, it's a very very good situation that we've got here at the moment you can also see none of these little ones are hugging on or dragging each other around they are very independent so it's going to make it a lot easier for the for the mom to choose one so we still have Caroline in but a lot more monkeys have finally turned up at the door we have alpha female pickle then we have Danny and April orphans from last year this is April here Danny's at the door and then we also have uh, Lexi, Molly we've got uh, this is in front of us, candle, and a few of the meals. But for now, all calm. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's episode, and I'm going to end off with Sybil. Sybil was unfortunate to be shot in the head with an uh, air rifle and has lost her sight. But because of the help of people like yourselves out there, we were able to give Sybil a second chance and she now lives in a fantastic enclosure with Shanti Ray, JB and Belle. It's your continued support that makes it possible for us to look after these monkeys and give many, many little lives a second chance. So thank you for your donations through PayPal, for joining Patreon, for sharing our YouTube channel, joining our Facebook and Instagram pages and becoming members which we have now reached the 50,000 mark and hopefully we're going to get a lot more. So thank you everybody out there, it's fantastic, we're really grateful.